been a part of submarines 32 years, my entire career, and so um, I've heard this story every year. And the reason I've heard it every year is because the submarine community doesn't let it die. Every year, the anniversary of the sinking, that message is cascaded. So the Thresher, designed and built by Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, the pride of Portsmouth, first of the class, designed to go deeper, designed to be faster than any submarine before. Successful uh, construction period, successful initial builders trials, and she actually had a successful, uh, was involved in some part of a, some, some type of a shock test. And just like every new construction submarine, they come back for a post shakedown availability, a PSA. And indeed, that was the case for the Thresher. She came back for her PSA, had some retrofit done, some mods done, and on April 10th, left the shipyard in preps for her post PSA sea trials. Escort ship was the Skylark. And uh, about 7.45 in the morning uh, of the 10th, she commenced her uh, controlled descent to a uh, deep dive. Those deep dives are very scripted. It's part of a, a specialized, unique test. You go to a certain depth, you walk the ship, you don't just drop down to test depth. It's, it's, it's very methodical. 9.13 that morning, Thresher reports to top side Skylark uh, experiencing minor difficulties. That is the last clear transmission ever received from a Thresher. 9.15, there's a garbled message. 9.17, we believe we hear an attempt to blow ballast tanks. And 9.18, we hear the imploding of the pressure hull. And at that moment, 129 on board the Thresher paid the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Ship's crew, shipbuilders, contractors, fathers, uncles, sons. Later that day, USS Thresher is reported as lost. That day, the Navy stands up and orders a board of inquiry. And within months, after pages and pages and pages of questions and answers, documentation, artifacts, volumes and volumes of collected information, identified the most likely cause of the sinking of the Thresher was attributed to a leaky seawater joint, a joint that, that sprayed, starting a chain of events of one failure after another that ultimately led to the inability for Thresher to blow ballast tanks and return to the surface. And today lies on the bottom of the ocean. So those 129 didn't die in vain. The government established, the Navy established what was called the Subsafe Program. Initially, the Subsafe Office was created, but that's where the standards, the design standards, the, di the, the, the size of a hole that is allowed in a pressure hull, the, 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 the procurement requirements, the production requirements, the level of knowledge required, the testing requirements, the inspection requirements, very robust requirements, uh, all aggregated in this single volume called the Subsafe Requirements Manual to ensure uh, that the submarine is designed and built to preclude a flooding event. And should a flooding event occur, that the submarine has the emergency procedures and the systems to return to the surface. Those are the fundamental tenets. And uh, those are the standards uh, that I, my entire 32 years, have been exposed to in the shipyard. So, so uh, as rigorous as our nuclear standards are, um, I'll tell you the subsafe standards are, are paralleled. We can be never wavering in our execution of those standards 
since Thresher, no U.S. submarine has ever been lost for which the subsafe requirements were invoked. For me, it's very much a, it's not just a book, it's not a spec, it's a way of thinking, it's a way of problem solving, it's a way of decision making, it's a guiding light.